eight souls, dinghy. What sort of nonsense is this? Couldn't it have been dropped from that aircraft, sir? A message dropped from an aircraft in these days. And an aircraft that you imagined. Did I imagine it, sir? Yes, Upton, I suggest you did. As certain as I stand here, I know that someone or something out there in the fog is trying to warn us. Why can't I make the captain understand? The Golden Age of Television presents John Carr starring in Strange Occurrence at Roxay with Tom Helmore and Patrick McNee after these messages. At Roxay Base here, sir. Our controller wants to know if there's anything doing tonight. Yes, we know, sir. It's bad here, too. I don't suppose he'll bother us, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. All quiet. Nothing moving in the area at all. They were expecting a Bristol transport, some kind of special flight from Canada. But he's being diverted to Northern Ireland because of the fog. Shall I get our supper, sir? Looks like being a quiet night. We'll do it according to the book, Sergeant. Just make your rounds first. Very good, sir. fire tenders and ambulance to stand by the tower and check in on radio. loud and clear. Have they had any instructions? Of course, to stand by the tower. <laughs> What's all the excitement? Didn't you hear that aircraft? I haven't heard anything, sir. I was only down below checking the operations clothes. But you must have heard it. It couldn't have been higher than 50 feet. Crash two to tower. Crash two to tower. Crash two. Stand by tower as instructed. Well, none of us heard it, sir. And I was with the operations clerks. Hello, tower. Yes, radar? What's going on up there, George? Having a practice in the fog? This is no practice, Tiny. Was that aircraft too low to show up on your screen? What aircraft? Do you mean to tell me that you didn't hear an aircraft either? It was only a few moments ago and flying very low. Oh, come off it, George. There's nothing flying within a hundred miles of here tonight. You've been hearing things, old boy. Have I your permission to dismiss the crash vehicle, sir? I don't understand this. I didn't hear anything, Sergeant. Nobody did, sir. Crash two to tower. Crash two, go ahead. We found a curious object on the runway. Might be part of a signal flare. Shall we bring it up? Roger. Get me the area controller, please. Uh, hello, Roxay Base here. Is the area still quiet? You're certain? There's nothing moving but the Bristol, then. No, it's all right. I just thought I heard an aircraft over here a few minutes ago. 
Yes, it uh, probably was a car engine. Okay, thank you. Good night. What do you make of this, sir? I've never seen anything like it before, have you? No, it's certainly not a signal flare. Well, I'll try and open it up. I don't think it'll go off, Ben. What's this? Look. 2215, dinghy, eight souls, position 55.10 north, 10.32 west. Send help. <laughs> it's Pilot Officer Wilson, sir. It's another of his little jokes. You think so? It's an official form, anyway. Here's the number in the corner. Evening, Upton. Evening, Sergeant. At ease. Why was the flare path on? Surely nothing can be flying. I thought I heard an aircraft overhead a few minutes ago, sir, so I lit up in case he was in trouble. An aircraft in this? Funny, I heard nothing. Have you checked with center? Yes, sir. They say there's nothing in the area. Did you hear it too, Sergeant? Well, sir, I, um... Uh, no, no, I didn't hear it, sir. Oh, you didn't? No one seems to have heard it but me, sir. And what exactly did you think you heard? A light aircraft, sir. Overhead and very low. His engine revved and then cut out. I expected to hear a crash, but nothing happened. You heard no crash, and yet you didn't hear the aircraft fly away? No, sir. And where were you? I was downstairs, sir, with the operations clerks. Did any of them hear it? No, sir. All right, Sergeant, will you leave us for a few minutes? I take it you checked with radar? Yes, sir. Nothing on the screen? No, sir. How many night watches have you been doing lately? No more than usual, sir. Well, if you're feeling a bit seedy, I can arrange for you to be relieved. We can't have you imagining things on a job like this. I'm perfectly fit, sir, and I certainly didn't imagine this. The devil's this. It came in this container, sir. What do you mean it came? A crash crew found it outside the tower. Eight souls, dinghy. What sort of nonsense is this? Couldn't it have been dropped from that aircraft, sir? A message dropped from an aircraft in these days. And an aircraft that you imagined. Did I imagine it, sir? Yes, Upton, I suggest you did. Just as I suggest this message is someone's idea of a joke. Two, two, one, five. Couldn't that be the time the message was originated? 22.15 hours? Look at your clock, Upton. The time is now exactly 22.10. Your message isn't due to be sent for another five minutes. Give me that form. Yes, and the container. I'll find the fool who thought this one up. Meanwhile, I suggest you forget this nonsense. But, sir, I heard that aircraft. Can't I get Rescue Center to check on it? You'll do absolutely nothing, do you understand? The golden age of television will continue in a moment. Control, ropes A base. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. Will do. Center has lost radio contact with that Bristol. They want us to call him on all frequencies. His code's Big Step 32. Is he overdue? No, they're not worried. They think he may have had radio failure. It's just a routine check. Very well. Start calling him, then. I'll take the frequencies on this side. Right, sir. Big Step 3-2. This is Ropesay. This is Ropesay. Come Calling in if Big you read me. Big Step 3-2. Come in, please. Big Step 3-2. This, this is Ropesay. Come in if you read me. Come in, please. No contact. Call the area controller, please, and tell him. Yes, sir. I'll enter it in the log. Area controller, please. Uh, Rogue say base, yes, sir. We call Big Step 3-2 on all our frequency, but we can't raise him. Very good, sir. Will do. What time is it on your watch? 22.20, sir. 
What's the matter? It stopped. The clock stopped. So it has. It's plugged in all right. There's no power failure here. You remember that message, don't you? Yes, sir, I remember it well. It was prefixed by a figure, wasn't it? Yes, time of origin, 22... Fi oh, you're not still going on about that, sir. I'm going to get a search started. But just because a clock stopped? No, not just because a clock stopped, but because it stopped on the time given on that message, but for all the other reasons. Sure, as certain as I sit here, I know that I'm being impelled by something or someone to get a search going. But, sir... If you don't want to be involved, you can leave the tower. Don't do it, sir. Sure, that was a genuine call for help. Now, give me the latitude and longitude and then get out. I, I can't remember it, sir. A moment ago, you said you remembered it well. Uh, I don't recall it, sir. And I shall just have to contact the CEO and get it from him, no matter what he thinks. Oh, please don't do that, sir. I can guess what happened when he was here just now. Shaw, sure, give me that position. Then get out. <phone rings> Control Roque, say. No, nothing. It's center control about the Bristol. Yes, Roger. I haven't heard from the Bristol. And there's been a mix-up about its estimated time of arrival. It's overdue and must now be in a state of emergency. Well, perhaps you're right. Maybe, maybe there is a connection. A meaning. I don't know, it's... It's awfully hard to swallow, is it? Well, I mean, why you, sir? Why were you the only one to hear the play? I don't know why, sure. I don't understand it, and I can't explain it. Perhaps it's simply because I am in charge here tonight, or possibly I am willing to believe certain things more readily than other people. I don't know why. Well, anyway, I think I can remember that message, sir. Do you want to write it down? Yes, let's not waste any more time. Dinghy, eight souls, position 55.10 north, 10.32 west, send help. Right, now the first thing to do is to plot this position. Five point ten north, ten point thirty two west. Where was his diversion to? Garway in Northern Ireland, sir. It checks. Bang on the course of the missing Bristol. You're dead right, sir. Couldn't be more on the track if it was a position report from the plane itself. Now the problem is to convince Center to start a search. We couldn't very well refer them to a message form 305-RFC-1917. What? 305-RFC-1917. It's a little form number printed in the corner. I've never seen such a form in the RAF. Of course not. It isn't 1917, it's the year 1917. And there wasn't any RAF then. It was the RFC, the Royal Flying Corps. You, you don't suppose that uh, all those chaps who served in the RFC you were... I'm afraid I can't answer that, sure. But right now I've got to go about convincing Center to get a search started. We haven't heard a thing on the emergency frequency all night, sir. But we might have. You mean tell them that we'd received an SOS? We could do that, sir. No, all the other stations would have heard it. Well, not if it was a very weak signal that only we'd heard. It was a very weak signal, wasn't it, sir? Flash call. Get me rescue center. Well, Upton, how are you feeling? Better? I'm feeling fine, thank you, sir. Kilkenny Tower from Shackleton, Rescue 26. How do you hear me? You are loud and clear also, Kilkenny. I am setting course now. Listening out on this frequency, over and out. What's all that about? 
Is there a rescue operation going on? Yes, sir. Do you know anything about it? Yes, sir. I called them up. You did? Has an emergency call come through? No, sir. You mean you acted on that ridiculous message? Yes, sir. I did it because I thought... I gave you direct orders not to take any action. You do remember that, don't you? Sir, I acted in the conviction that... You acted like a fool. I'm relieving you of your duties as of now. At least let me explain my reasons, sir. Well, what are they? First, the clock, sir. Look at the clock. All right, it's stopped. So? There's been no power failure here, yet it's stopped at the exact time given on the message. Yes, yeah, so it has. Well, surely you weren't prepared to gamble your whole career on a coincidence like that? Look at the form numbers in the corner, sir. RFC 1917. Royal Flying Corps, 1917. There can't be any argument that it's an authentic form. What are you saying? And the 305, it could be a form number or a code number or a... It might be the 305th Pursuit Squadron. There was such a squadron of the RFC, I know. The whole thing is preposterous. There was nothing flying. You checked that yourself. Nothing locally. But Center told me there was a Bristol inbound from Canada. And just after you left the tower, it was reported overdue. Is that so? I've checked the position given in that message, sir. It's dead on the track of the missing aircraft. The Bristol could have ditched here. Go on. I rang Center and told them I'd received a call on the emergency frequency. Are you telling me you deliberately faked an SOS? It was the only way I could convince them, sir. I'm going to call off the search and tell Center that radio message was faked. The ditching position wasn't faked, sir. Can't we just wait a little while, sir, until the rescue planes have searched the area? Are you asking me to be a party to this thing? Only for a few hours, sir. While you try to pull off a fantastic mission that might cost us men and aircraft? Or that may save the lives of those men in the Bristol. We know it's overdue. It must be down in the sea. Believe me, sir, I didn't cause these strange happenings tonight, but a chain of them has occurred. Even you must admit that. And I beg you to have enough faith in me or with me until the search is finished. You're asking me to have faith? Yes, sir. Oh, I know what you must be thinking. But there's no law that says everything must be cut and dried. Things happen every day that defy understanding. I'm sorry, Upton. I can't go along with it. You'll have to consider yourself under arrest. There is one fact we can check, sir. Oh, what's that? Through center, we can get the number of people on board that Bristol. And it'll only take a minute. I see. You expect there'll be eight. Yes, sir, I do. All right, Upton. Ring them. Thank you, sir. Get me center, please. Can I have traffic? Hello, Control Roxay here. Have you a crew list for that missing Bristol Big Step 32? Good. No, I don't want the names, just the number of people aboard. Are you quite certain? I see. There are only seven aboard, sir, not eight. Well, that's that. I don't understand it. There must be some mistake about the passenger list. Let's not discuss it anymore. I'm going to call off the search. You call Radar and tell them to come up here and take over. Tightly closed. It's as calm as ever now. There's not a breath of wind. Yes. Who ever heard of a gust of wind in a fog like this? Come here, Upton. Is this wind speed indicator serviceable? Yes, sir. I was standing right over it. The needle never moved. And I know that door was closed. This is fantastic. You know, if it weren't for those seven men on the plane instead of eight, I... I wonder if we read that message correctly. Where is it? Couldn't there have been an eighth man on that Bristol, sir? One that wasn't on the passenger list? Where did this newspaper come from? Sergeant Shaw, sir. 
I found your eighth soul, Upton. Listen to this. Famous airman comes home. A Bristol aircraft of transport command is today bringing back the body of Air Marshal Lord Hurst, whose death occurred last Wednesday during a liaison visit to the Royal Canadian Air Force. Lord Hurst, who won the Victoria Cross in 1917, while serving with the famed Eagle Pursuit Squadron, was the only surviving ace of the First World War still serving in the RAF. He's to be buried with full military honors in the cemetery at the Royal Air Force College. So it's going to be all right, sir? Yes, Upton. It's going to be all right. By the way, what made you so certain of all this? It was the squadron number printed in the form, sir. The 305th, the Eagle Squadron. My father was a flyer in that squadron. You hear that, sir? Hear what? It's all right, sir. It's just that I know they'll find those men from the Bristol. Join us at the same time next week when the Golden Age of Television presents Face to Face.